Captain's Log, Episode 17. This week's episode of the Beer Avengers podcast is sponsored by Astoria Beer and Cheese Ditmars. Located at 3511 Ditmars Boulevard in Astoria, Queens, now featuring, for an increasingly limited time, the 2020 Goose Island Bourbon County Brand Stouts. Also, check out their new line of gluten-free beers from Ghostfish Brewing, including today's sponsored pour, Watch Stander Stout. Enjoy their eclectic array of craft beer, artisanal cheeses, and specialty grocery items. Astoria Beer and Cheese Ditmars, home bar to yours truly, Captain Porter Brown Stout. Today's show features, I don't know, six pours, seven pours? It's hard to remember as it was recorded on Inauguration Day and features much inebriated joy combined with scattered meanderings. Episode 17 also welcomes the return of Cider Girl, who joins us in an exploration of non-traditional beer and beer adjacents, or things that are near to beer, both physically and organically. Cider Girl also shares a loophole she's found to consume beer without drinking it. I think we also talk about mid-20th century science fiction, Jeopardy!, and roast chicken. It should also be noted that I seem to have become a bit overeager to announce our milestones, as late in the episode I announced we've had 13 guests on the show so far. If you've listened to the full archive, you have indeed heard 13 different voices, but three of those belong to Huck, the Beer Wonder, and yours truly. Looks like we'll have to wait a few more episodes to introduce you to our beer burglar from the Shire. And now, without further ado, please enjoy episode 17, Nearer My Beer to Thee. Well, with a beer, 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 Avengers, beer, 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 Avengers, beer, 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 Avengers. With a beer, Avengers. Welcome to the beer cast, everyone. Coming to you from an undisclosed location in Astoria, Queens. I am Captain Porter Brownstout. I'm coming to you from an undisclosed location in Manhattan Town. This is the Pale Male Hophead Huck. And coming to you from an undisclosed location in the County of Kings, it is I, the Beer Wonder. And coming to you from the bedroom of the undisclosed location of Hophead Huck, it's Cider Girl. Wow. And we are... The, the Beer, beer Avengers. All right, that was a that was a, that was a solid effort. Uh, That'd be great. Work. Yes, we are the Beer Avengers. Real Thanks thing. for coming, uh, our loyal fans, first timers, uh, somewhere in between. However, you fit into it, we're glad to have you here. This is a show where good friends who like beer hang out and drink beer and talk about drinking beer together and all the other things that might come into place. Um, you may have noticed from the intro we have for our first second time. Guest Beer Avenger, Cider Girl. What? Welcome, Cider Girl. Thank yeah. you. Happy to be here. Happy happy to have you here. And happy in general today because at the time of this recording, it is Inauguration Day. Woohoo! Uh, you know, we uh, we sort of soft pedaled the last two Nightmare Wednesdays. Uh, <laughs> two weeks ago, it was a insurrection and a riot. Last week, it was a good thing that was happening, but it was still a little stressful having yep. to deal with impeachment number two. But today was just great. And and in the spirit of Inauguration Day, I'm going to and in the spirit of full disclosure, the drink I'm going to have on the show is not my first drink. Uh, <laughs> I, I shook myself a beautiful uh, Knob Creek Manhattan with my dinner tonight. Mm. So that's how I got started. And now I'm here. Um, okay. And uh, it's good information to have. The captain yeah. is right, ready to go. I don't know that it's essential, but I just, I'm just, it's uh, just trying to like get all of you in the right, uh, right frame of mind. Uh, but I, uh, and I could talk about that for a while, but I don't think I should because I think all of us are a little dry and a little thirsty. So Some there's no better time than the present on inauguration day, 2021, than to get to the pores. Indeed. right? We have, we have a very special uh, theme today. Last time we had Cider Girl here. Uh, we did all ciders, right? And it was really great. So today we have Cider Girl with us again, and we're doing something special. We're doing uh, near or adjacent beers, or something's a little different. So we're doing uh, different beverages tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, who's going to start us off there, Beer Wonder? Gosh, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I don't want to be rude. Uh, so I think we should invite Cider Girl to kick things off on this very special day. 
You know, I wouldn't have even thought about that. I'm so glad you're here, Brie Winter. That's a great idea. That's why you keep me around. Yeah. (laughs) One of many reasons. I I am happy uh, to be representing the women uh, who have been uplifted today, smashing that glass ceiling uh, by enjoying a fine cider (laughs) with my friends. Uh, When I was last on the podcast, I talked a lot about Doc's Cider and how much I loved it. And so for today... I have uh, a lovely uh, dock cider that is a raspberry in What a lovely adjunct. Yeah. So still trying to make that make that part of my vocabulary. <laughs> I have to catch up with Huck. I'm opening it and trying not to spill it. And I've got a glass from the cidery. Ooh. Great. And here comes the pour. Proper glassware. Definitely. Oh my, it's it's fizzing up nicely. That looks like it's good got good carbonation on it for oh, yeah. sure. Oh, we're seeing a nice a nice rose color to it as well. Those raspberries. Yeah, that's a blood. good color, huh? It's Indeed. Beautiful. Reminds me of a little blush. It has a little blush to it. Sure. Am I I'm not allowed to drink it yet, right? Oh you go ahead. You can have a sip if you want. Go oh, ahead. It's, yeah. a, it's a big bottle. As long as there's still some <laughs> left when we all do our, our group cheers together. So okay. along those lines of, of uh, fruity uh, drinks uh, with, uh, I have, uh, we, well, hard seltzer is a big deal right now. Yeah, true. Uh, everybody's Very much drinking so. the, uh, the White Claws and the Trulies, but I have something from Evil Twin NYC. This is their Evil Water Pastry Seltzer with strawberry, peach, and pineapple. Whoa. Now wow. I believe when they, oh gosh. That, really, whoa, it really that was an excellent crack right there. That, that oh, I could hear that. All the way in the undisclosed the location and, and everything. Things. And I've got my glass with ice. Ooh. Oh, wow. And uh, nice reusable straw. Good color on that one. You yeah. can definitely see that fruit is doing its work. And you can really smell the fruit, too. It's like just, just popping out of the glass. You can see all that foam. And I think it might be made with marshmallows. Did we decide that? Uh, uh, that's what they call it, a pastry seltzer. So it's, yeah. it's, okay. it's definitely different. And it's got, a, it's got a pretty good look. Pretty good look to it, yeah. Evil water. <laughs> Gentlemen. Well. They can't decide which one it's going to go. I know. I know. I, I'll go. I, I am. Uh, I think ex- you should. Yeah, I really I feel it's only polite that you should. Thank you. I appreciate that. But I, I am very excited because uh, today uh, I get to do my very first. Oh, oh I, I didn't know if you were going to say it first. <laughs> Sound cue. <Yeah. laughs> Sponsored for there we go. That's what I was looking. You, we can you can fix that in post. Yeah, just let's re- let's just do it again. Let's just repeat it. Sponsored <laughs> for oh, there you go. There we go. Yeah, I just want to hear it twice. Uh, so I'm excited to have my very first sponsored report from our fabulous uh, uh, sponsor, Story Beer and Cheese Dimars. So um, we've got uh, from the Saint Ambrose Cellars, which is in Michigan. Mm. Uh, I'm looking at the Grateful Head Mango Habanero. Sister, I think is how it's pronounced. It is a mead, so a honey based. Uh-huh. Oh, great. Very excited about this one. So let's crack this bad boy. Ooh. All right. Yep. Good one there. And let's I, I like a one. good mead. There we go. Oh, that's, that's very medieval. Nice. It's got a real nice uh, yep. a golden really haze to it. Clear. Very, very clear. Uh, is one of the things I'm noticing. I yeah. can see basically very straight, see through, yeah. straight through. It's not going to hide my secret identity too well. Um, <laughs> But, you know, we'll do what we can. Yeah, mead so, is an interesting good. beverage. We'll talk more about that. Yeah, Absolutely. Yep, And quite a kick to it. Different aroma than I would have anticipated. I definitely get a lot of mango already. Wow. What about the habanero? <laughs> uh, I think that's going to happen on the other end, but not up the nose yet. <laughs> All right. Well, I, uh, too, have a... Sponsored pour. That's right. It's another sponsored pour. And this one uh, is from uh, another one from our fellow anarchist jurisdiction in Seattle. Uh, making it up to them featuring Seattle two weeks in a row. So mm-hmm. I, I hope that, that works. This is a, uh, it's a watch stander is the name of the uh, ghost fish is the brewery. Oh, fun. Uh, it is called a uh, watch stander stout where it makes this a beer adjacent or an untraditional beer. It's a gluten-free beer. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Fact, everything ghost fish does is gluten-free all of their beers and if you go to their tasting room, their their uh, their little uh, brew pub they have there is all gluten free. Um, huh. So you know, I think when we this is when we use the term near beer for this show, we were talking about things that sometimes are sold next to beer, meaning they are very physically near to beer. This is something that is near to a traditional beer, so that's why I chose this for this show, the Watchstander Stout. And let's look at this pour here. 
I'm going to buy your theory on that, Glenn. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, so um, nice head on that. Nice. Good. Well, that's yeah. Captain to you. Ooh, good ca- dark- what did I? Mm. It's good fine. dark color there. Good head on that one, too. There you guys are close friends. You can use this informal. <laughs> that's right. Oh, and nice can art, too. I'm nice. do. Yeah. That's a good looking beer. Yeah. It is. All right. Well, uh, nice, nice creamy head. All right. Oh. Cheers, Beer Avengers. Cheers. So Happy Inauguration Day. Oh, that is very tasty. Oh, mm. so good. We should have called it the. We should have uh, used a gluten-free mm. theme. Oh, well, the gluten free theme. I guess yeah. it is all gluten free. Yeah. Start, yeah. start the show right? over. To start out with anyway. Whew. I, I'm going to be honest, y'all. That habanero is uh, is there. It's present. It is alive, and it gets oh, right great. up your nose. Oh, great! Uh, yep. <laughs> Whew. I, I would think that's a great, uh, great idea with the with the, the sweetness of the honey, the honey meat there, uh, honey wine they call it, uh, with the habaneros should be a good contrast. Because full, disclo- full disclosure, I have one of those in my refrigerator as well, so I've been really curious. I didn't know if I was going to use it for a show, but now that you have, I can I have free reign to like, okay, I'll have this right. Yeah. Yes. It is a, uh, it is, it is quite bold. It definitely wow. starts off with sweetness and then we get a little bit of that mango and then you swallow it down and like my eyes are watering ever wow. so slightly right now. Wow. <laughs> so it's a, uh, it's got a kick wow. in a delightful way. Very refreshing. I could imagine this being excellent on a hot day. Now meat is an old beverage, but it's uh, it's certainly new to the craft scene in the U S it seems that the Midwest is, is the heart of mead making these days, Michigan. Is it really? Ohio. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what's the other one? Where's St. Andrews? St. Andrews is Anna. in Michigan. Okay. Yep. And they're, um, Beulah, I believe is how it's pronounced. And they, they've been, uh, right. honey makers for close to 40 years. And then they ah. moved into the meat industry. They also do, um, wine and, and other ciders, uh, uh-huh. alongside that. So I took a quick peek at them. Um, but this one is very, it, it's unexpected, but very refreshing for sure. Yeah, I've, I've tried a few of them from San Ambrose uh, recently because we, we've had a mead line at, at the bar I worked at, and uh, uh, I've had a, the, they make great stuff. They're really good. Yeah. Mm. It, this one is interesting. <laughs> I uh, I know I've I've made a, a big thing in previous shows talking about how I can't always tell the difference between stouts and porters, uh, but I've definitely had some porters that I, uh, I I think I think maybe where stouts are more in in glutes like milk and milk chocolate. Uh, whereas porters are more towards coffee and dark chocolate. And that's to me, even though this one is considered to be a stout, I think it's more in the porter realm. Um, but it's, it's pretty amazing. They're able to do this without, without gluten. I just, I did take a few notes here. Uh, it's made with brown rice, malted millet and buckwheat. Okay. Um, oh. and it has, this is uh, apparently this is a thing for, glu- for gluten-free people. Uh, it's got the purity protocol, gluten-free rolled oats. Uh, but it does have like those flavors of the dark chocolate and roast coffee. And it's, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's, uh, I want to say it was like a, it's a, oh, it's a 6.5 percenter. So, oh. so solid. Uh, but definitely it's, 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 it's on that sort of drinkable scale. It's definitely heartier than say a black lager or a Schwartz beer. Okay. Very good. Well, this seltzer is uh, super interesting. I'm getting definitely getting the strawberry is the is the overpowering fruit. But if you drank this, you'd be like, "How is this a seltzer?" <laughs> okay, you know because it's not it's fizzy, but the fruit is so uh, over uh, overpowering to the like mm-hmm. seltzer water that just serves as a blank canvas. Really, that's nice. If, though. Refreshing. If I may, if I may jump in on the seltzer a little bit, if you please. Don't. Yeah, uh, head huck. Uh, have uh, done some sampling of seltzer over the summer. Uh, as cider girl, um, sometimes it's hard to find cider and you get uh, a lot of uh, seltzers this summer to try. And I don't like seltzer taste. I, I find it metal-y. Uh, so I like it with other flavors in it. Uh, and a lot of the ones out there, you'll have one flavor like a lime or a berry. Um, the evil waters, they're mixing two or three different flavors in together. And uh, so if you don't like the flavor of seltzer, the evil water will be more up your 
uh, Allie. Uh, if you're if you're wanting the seltzer flavor, um, there's some other ones that you probably would enjoy more. Uh, so I lean towards enjoying the Evil Water because it does have that um, very fruity, um, refreshing quality to it uh, that I prefer in my non-beer beverage. And if I'm not mistaken, Evil Water has done some really interesting experiments. Are there any flavors that you thought were particularly ace? I, my favorite one that I tried this summer was uh, the Rocket Pop, which was uh, reminiscent of the old fashioned popsicle you would get in the summer. Uh, the big one that was red, white, and blue. Uh, so it had all those kind of naughty, sugary popsicle flavor in it uh, while still being an adult beverage. Uh, it was very good. <laughs> uh, it was very sweet. Uh, so if you were faint of heart, as far as sweet things go, you wouldn't recommend it. Uh, they had a really interesting one. Um, Hophead, was that uh, turmeric that was in the other one that we tried? Tamarind. Tam there we go. Thank you. Um, can you say that again for me? Tamarind. Thank you. Like the monkey uh, with the <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't care for that one as much because it wasn't as sweet. Uh, but the people who I was enjoying them with liked them quite a bit. Yeah, uh, you, Mother Pucker had had a couple. Oh, yeah. It's like she was, she loved it, and it did taste like a cocktail. You know, it tasted like a like a pina colada. Now, what is the percentage on that one again? Did you did you tell us? This one's only five. Okay. So it's uh, is that fairly common for uh, for a seltzer? Yeah, they tend they tend to be about five. Yeah, the okay. the Trulies and the White Claws of the world, yeah, about five percent, like a bud. I feel like the the whole genre of spiked seltzers is so new that it might even splinter into different things eventually. The fact that like something that's called, as you said, it's a pastry stout seltzer or not so pastry, just a pastry seltzer, yeah, doesn't taste as seltzery. That might even become its own thing, separate of yeah. the seltzer. <laughs> yeah, I think it might even it might even be like a, 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 a alcoholic <laughs> soda, you know. Yeah, sure. it is That's more, another it, way to put it. You guys yeah, want to? Can you take that out in the edit? My, <laughs> my stutter. The spiky soda. <laughs> yeah, it comes off more it's as a soda. Yeah. Now that 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 makes a lot of sense. It's uh, it's it was funny because I was uh, for a while I was resistant to the trend. Uh, but now that so many of the microbreweries are are jumping on that, like finding their own creative ways to do it, I'm I'm getting more and more curious about it. Single Cut just released a couple uh, recently. Okay, yeah, a lot of breweries are doing it. This yeah. one's kind of weird, and it might be because I have the ice, and maybe I'm getting an an ice cream headache from it. But it's yeah. a little much for my brain. I don't know what. I might have to switch to beer. All right, <laughs> that'd be a I, shame. I, I, <laughs> well, you know, this, this is it's it's uh we, we it's it is really interesting to discuss the whole idea. Like I uh, the 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 sponsored pour that uh, I won't get, I'm not going to play the theme again. <laughs> the sponsored sponsored pour, pour that uh, that Beer Wonder has. Uh, I have that one in my refrigerator as well, and I know uh, Huck, you have a another version of that there. Uh, it's sort of it's, it's, it's uh, listed as apple pie in a can. Oh, the mead, yeah. Uh, but uh, they have both of those as a story beer and cheese dip Mars at 3511 dip Mars are our sponsors. Uh, and, uh, and so I'm really curious to get into that. Oh, the, the, the spice profile is getting a little much for you there, beer wonder. It's very good. It's very good, but it was, it, it, it's unexpected every time. It's delightful. I am actually very much enjoying this, but every time I'm like, Oh, it's back. <laughs> it's just right up my nose. Well, like, I guess, I guess to me, the question is how are you with spicy things in general? See, I really like spicy food, which is you why do? this okay. one is actually kind of shocking to me. In fact, one of my – while this is, you know, a spicy mead, uh, you know, where right. honey is is where we're getting a lot of our fermentable sugar, one of my favorite spicy beers is actually made by our friends at Big Alice. It is a jalapeno rye. Um, oh, so that's it's a, a good one too. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and that one for some reason just burns down the back of my throat. This one just wants to creep into my nose, which makes sense because you get kind of a back reflux when you're tasting a beer, when you eventually swallow it, where everything goes back up your nose. Uh, right. And I have not been intensely sniffing. So it's, <laughs> it, it is, it is, it's keeping me alert and awake and quite happy. It's just, a, this is an, one of those beers that, or excuse me, meads, beverages that just keep surprising you over and over. So what the what the listener isn't he isn't seeing is every time Beer Wonder takes a sip, he flaps his arms around and like he's put 
fire out and his eyes water up. So I just want you guys to picture that every time you, you hear beer, I, I, uh, there's a whole at, at the clapping risk of thing going his on. Face, I may even reduce a photograph or two of that. Uh, that. <laughs> and we do what we can for our adoring public. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Cider Girl, we haven't heard about this docs. Yes, yes. Oh, this is so good. Um, I'm just going to take another sip. Oh. Sipping for science, very important. Ah, uh, yes. So one of the things I was reading about it is it does have the champagne yeast in it. And I think you saw when I was pouring, it really did have a really, um, fu you know, fuzzy head that like really bubbled a lot. And it continues to release the bubbles as it's sitting next to me. So that really uh, provides a lot of excitement to the experience of drinking it uh make and it also gets that bubbles right to your head so i'll probably be drunk in about three more sips uh, excellent <laughs> it is only 5.5 uh but with the sugar and the bubbles it probably packs a little bit more punch than that uh it is of course a docs draft cider which comes from upstate new york and all the apples and all the raspberries that are used in this uh, come from upstate New York as well. So that's sort of cool, uh, supporting the local economy with our cider drinking. And this is, I don't taste the apples that much. I, I definitely am getting raspberry first and it is not, it is not overly sweet. So even though I'm, I've got a bunch of raspberries uh, coming into my mouth as I'm drinking it, uh, it still has a little um, sort of bitterness that comes with like a, a blackberry kind of feel. So uh, it's not too sweet, even though it's uh, very fruity. Would you maybe call it a crisp finish? Ooh, yes. Is that a sound? Right. That should be a sound cue. No, too. no, I, no it is. No. It is. But, to me, but to me, that's what makes a fruit adjunct great mm. is that it's not it doesn't have the artificial flavors that turn to chemicals in your mouth afterwards it's just like it hits you and then it's gone i think that's great a crisp finish yeah oh. now, we've been throwing around the word adjunct a lot on this one huck can you maybe fill us in on what an adjunct would be for those of you who didn't listen to our our, our new year's eve <laughs> actually uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah. funny you should say that because I, I, I last time i said that like wheat is an adjunct uh, which I guess it is when you make a wheat beer and rice is an adjunct, but it's certainly being applied more these days to these add-ons like, mm -hmm, like this sure. as the adjuncts. Well, I think that's what you were referring to the first time apple. you mentioned it, right? Yeah. So it has two, it still has two, two uh, uses in, in the beverage production. Yeah. I think, I think the, the, the time when we were asked about it by one of our uh, live, uh, someone named Lynn, I think uh, asked about it in our, in our live show one of our fans on, on Facebook live, uh, you were specific. I did find out, I didn't hear you say it the first time, because this is what I talk about. I, I actually listen more when I'm editing. Um, and, uh, and that you had just used it previously to refer to a beer that I had about, you were talking about like marshmallows and things like that. Right. But when she asked that question, uh, scholarly completist that you are, you, you gave her the broadest answer for adjuncts, which is, you're right. Whatever things you initially put in, like rice, yeah, as as replacing something in the grain bill, uh, yeah, it'd be considered an adjunct. Uh, a lot of these, when they have rice loggers, they actually will call them adjunct loggers. Mm -hmm. But when we're talking about stuff like fruit, that's added in. It's not replacing uh, the barley. So that's that's the difference. Two kinds of adjuncts. Very good. Oh yeah, I'm. I, I've been reading the Bible of beer. Blessed be. Blessed be. Oh, is, is that the same be book the Bible. that uh, Beer Wonder said he got? Uh, no, but I was inspired by him, and I went to look for that book, and it's not available on a Kindle because I wanted to start reading right away. So they had another one. Uh, uh, yeah, you you do want – you would want this one on a Kindle because it is a solid, like, two and a half inches thick. <laughs> it's, okay, it's okay. The next time I see you, Huck, I will happily lend it to you. Oh, no, no, no. We, yeah, can, we, can, we can pray together to the to the <laughs> gods of beer. Praise Ninkasi. Have another drink. I need, I need to find these books. I've been spending all of my time reading Dune lately. Yeah. I hear also you. a worthy endeavor. It, it, is it? Have you read it? I, I, I have, have not, but I've heard good things. But I think, Cider Girl, you've read it, right? Of course. Well, I, I, I mean, I assume because <laughs> I, I, you would have read it at some point. When did you When did you first read Dune? Uh, high school, I think. Okay. Have you reread it multiple times since then? I, um, I have reread 
read the first and second several times. Um, after that, uh, you lost me. Um, oh, they don't get as good after they don't. Uh, the second one is my favorite. Uh, that Children of Dune? Yeah, sure. Okay. I, don't I don't know. I'm, I'm just starting me. to get you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But yeah, when Dune, the original movie came out, it had Sting in it. And yes. that's the best thing I had to say about the movie version uh, at the time. I, uh, once I finish the book, I may watch it again, just so it makes more sense. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the second movie is actually called Dune 2 Buggy. <laughs> oh, no. Let me start again. Let me start again. Actually, I think it's called, the second book is called Dune 2 Electric Buggy. Well, it, it's funny. Last night on Jeopardy, they had a didn't work called, didn't work uh, either, yeah. called, called, called movies that sound like they would be sequels. Mm. Uh, so, for instance, the clue was this Frank Herbert adaptation sounds like it could be a sequel to the Englishman who went up a hill and came down a mountain. And so the answer was doomed. That's, a stretch. That's, a stretch. That's terrible. It wasn't great. It wasn't the best category, but it was, it was you know, those writers come up with all kinds of things. Where, where we I know. Jennings, I think he's doing a great job. Yeah, I think he is. Yeah. I think he is. I mean, I, st- I will always miss Alex, but you know. Yeah. But uh, but I don't, I don't miss him as much when we uh, do this instead of watching Jeopardy. Alex was a drinker. He was a drinker. Was he? What, 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 was, what was Alex known to drink? I don't know, but he always got really happy when one of the contestants would tell a story about some sort of alcoholic beverage. He'd be like, I think he liked I, wine. Right? Yeah, it might have been a wine guy. No. That seems to fit, especially back in the mustache days, which I do miss. <laughs> it's funny that I think he wound up, uh, he, was, he was without the mustache for longer than he was, but it was such a distinctive look that Will Ferrell always played him with a mustache. He did. Yeah, and he had to. He had to. Uh, hopefully, they'll give, I know they're giving people a shot. Maybe they'll give Will Ferrell a shot at hosting. That would be kind of fun. <laughs> but but is he going to, if he does, will he host him as his impression of Alex Trebek? I have to keep that up long term. I guess that's he probably would have to. That's very meta. Like, there's a whole full circle thing there that I, I would... It's almost like postmodern, and I'm sort of into it, and also a little terrified. You got it. But, uh, I'm I'm getting close to my second pour here, but I don't have one. How are you doing there over there, Huck? Are you? Uh, I'm going. I'm going to get it right now. Oh, All good. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I don't want to twist your arm there, but uh, I could tell it was. Uh, I, I mean, he he uh, <laughs> he seemed to be. He seemed to have mixed feelings. And we love our friends at Evil Twin, uh, but he seemed to have some mixed feelings about that. Uh, well, this is the thing as, as a non-beer drinker, right? Um, yeah. We have different palates from people who are beer drinkers for the most part, right? Sure, there are some sure. gluten-free people who just love their beer and so they'll enjoy the gluten-free beer. But a lot of the people who don't drink beer, it's because they don't like the taste of beer. So the, the ciders, the seltzers, the meads are all wonderful for people like Cider Girl. Because then I can go to bars with you and have a good time, right? I, I would also um, if you yeah. like beer, you know, maybe that's okay and you like beer. I would also say one person who's in a bunch of our Beer Avenger photos and uh who is definitely a friend of the Beer Avengers, our friend uh who never because he stopped drinking beer because of the gluten issue, our friend we can call his real name because he never had a name, Adam. Uh our friend Adam, I think uh if he Cider were to guy. discover this brewery. Uh, I think he might uh, have a, have a lot. To, he might actually enjoy it quite a bit. That's the thing because I know a lot of people who who have who have celiacs or other reasons they can't have gluten. Um, or uh, they, they, there's not really often a good selection for them. I mean, I early on I remember the one beer that we would have that was gluten free. I think was Omission. In fact, I remember okay. in our early days at the yeah. Pony Bar, I think the first time I ever discovered a gluten-free beer was Omission that was there. And of course, because of what they're making it with, it just has a very different flavor than I think what most of us anticipate. Well, I, I don't know how available Ghost Fish is going to be in this market, but based on this beer, I would say they really have their shit together. Okay. And if you're looking for something to try, if you like, if you had to stop drinking beer because you have a gluten, you discovered a gluten allergy late in life, uh, but you really want to have beer, I would say look for Ghost Fish because this is this is a really, really, I, I like it a lot. That's a good recommendation coming from the captain. Yeah. I, wish awesome. we had, I wish we had like a, a theme for that, Captain's check mark or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I it should be like all the... Your, all your themes. Eventually, captain you're going to be all, all like, 
Uh, we're going to be an hour show with nothing but themes. <laughs> there won't be any dialogue. It'll just be all themes. Yes. Bing, 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 bing. We need to create a soundboard that just we can fully abuse and like throw in <laughs> everywhere. Applause, yeah. you know, all that good stuff. Well, I'd like to get back to beer myself. I know we had, we had, <laughs> we had fun, kids. We had funs going gluten-free. We got to get back to beer. This one's been thrown around the Instagrams a lot today because it's very appropriate for the day. Oh, uh, maybe you've seen it around. This is from Interboro Brewing. And it's yes. Oh, yeah. yeah yes. Yes. El Nuevo El- Prez. Woohoo! El Nuevo Prez. Pilsner. Now, they've had a oh. series of these at Interboro. Uh, they're a takeoff on the Dominican beer, Presidente. Right? That's a pretty popular beer. Uh, and so they had another one, like a President beer last year. But this one is actually a collab between uh, three breweries, Interboro, Tripping Animals out of Florida, and Mumford out of uh, California, and two, oh, wow. two bars in Brooklyn, Beer Wax and oh. The Sampler. So ah. the five-way collab on this lovely pills. Let's take a look. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and that and that's what a pills should be. It's got that beautiful gold color to it. It's straw. Is it clear? I can't tell, honestly, Huck. You're getting a nice clarity, yeah. Okay. Definitely seeing some clarity here. Oh. Uh, El Nuevo Perez. It's a little bit darker, uh, uh, but yeah, very, very clear, very clear. Let's give it a try. Mm-hmm. Full disclosure, I love when Beer Wander describes the beers. <laughs> so happy. Well, this girl, Cider, girl. Cider Girl, we're at one mind because I didn't I didn't this is I great. recognize this is that really great. Literally and and I, I think the record will show. Uh in our very first episode, when I was listening, I didn't even notice it when we were recording it, but when I went back to edit our first episode, I'm like Oh, that's one of the best things that I didn't know was going to happen is beer wonder describing the beers. Right. I, I love it. I love I love the good look, the smell of beer. It just gets me excited. <laughs> I just want to drink it. If I was over in, you know, the in Manhattan town, I would probably be having a sip, but you know, COVID. So Yeah, I got a hop head. What what was that like? Was it uh yeah. pills? It's got a nice hoppy nose, which I like mm-hmm. on a pilsner. And uh it's got a really, really it's got some body to it, which is nice. It's not Ooh. not too thin. For something that clear, it's it's a little surprising to me that it, you, you're saying body. It's got that yeah. fullness, which is which is very cool. It's got sweetness on the tongue and a just nice bitter finish, like straight up oh. what a pilsner should be. But I know it's it's got some uh, other things going on with it. Uh, let me find that. Uh, you guys talk amongst yourselves. Oh, actually, well, Captain's got a beer, I think. Well, we will. But before I do it, I, I want to ask if your uke is near. It is. Because uh, okay. this I is remember this song. Right. This is well. I, if you've edited it or changed it, I'm. I think it's it's. Uh, I, I I look forward to whatever whatever it is this week, uh, because works in progress is are always beautiful works. Uh, but yeah, I'm. Uh, I, I actually for a moment there when when Huck was pouring his beer, I took another trip down to the captain's cellar. Going to the captain's cellar, yeah. Come high water or hell, yeah. Filled with stouts and porters, made with bricks and mortars. Going to the captain's cellar, yeah. That's right. We're in the captain's house. That was, that was wonderful. That was great. What you, uh, what yes, you I, didn't hear at home was that there was a, stra- a full dance party between Cider Girl and the Beer Wonder there. Oh, yeah. It was, uh, it was un- unforgettable. Um, so... <laughs> So uh, I, I, I'm trying to shoehorn this, and I don't think it's that much of a shoehorn uh, to the same theme that Huck had with his. I, uh, I've talked about this brewery a lot in the past uh, when we talk about things that are our favorites, but I've never featured one of their pours on the show. Uh, I'm talking about Prairie Ales from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. And I think this fits because we have – I looked this up and I promptly forgot – how many different states we've featured. Uh, we've also been pretty clear that where we all fall politically, most <laughs> of us here on the show, definitely the main three of us, and I think every one of our guests, if I may be so bold. Uh, but we don't choose our beers by state by that. Uh, we uh, we had uh, just two weeks ago, we had uh, the incredulous bulk who's from Ohio because I have many family and friends in Ohio that don't fall on the spectrum that Ohio does when you look at them on electoral map. 
Uh, we have lots of friends in all of those places. I don't know where Prairie falls into this, but I would, I, but I know that there are people in Oklahoma who are on the same side. I, uh, we, 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 at some point need to reach out to, uh, and figure out how to live with the Trump supporters. But also this is more for those of you who are there who feel alone. We're, we're with you and we support you. And this has been in my cellar since I got it from Tavor last March. It's the Prairie Weekend. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that can art is spectacular. Well, technically this is bottle art. Or bottle art. I guess it would be it would be <laughs> bottle art. Yes. But it is it is beautiful art on the on the container. It's a 13.3 percenter. Oh. Uh it has coconut, cacao nibs, and marshmallows. This Ooh. sounds like a captain appropriate 100% on well, yeah, the captain cellar. It's true. I mean, it, yes, I would expect nothing less from you. Adjuncts. I, uh, soundboard. I did read since we've all been talking about adjuncts that one thing that makes things less sellable are the adjuncts. Correct. True. Uh-huh. So, but I think the the base thing we have. Here. Yeah, this this is straight up motor oil, and that's beautiful. It's just yeah, no quite, no head whatsoever. Not at all. Oh, there's now we're tiny, getting this tiny little hint of it there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's gonna smell so good. I bet. Oh, it's yeah. gonna smell so good. But, uh, Oh, you're right. It does. Yeah. yeah. I've had a few prairie stouts and they are fantastic. They are stout. They really are. Yeah. I mean, we talked about them. I think we talked about the basic Becky a while ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Love them. Um, and talked about different other ones that we've had from them. Uh, I've talked about the trip I took with my father to Australia last year, mm-hmm. almost a full year ago at this point. Um, and we were in Adelaide. And uh, like I said, it's, Craft beer bars are a mixed bag in Australia in the places I visited. Uh, but we went to one place and I started thumbing through their menu. It was one of those like the big menus where they're all like in like plastic container things. And they had they had a couple of prairie beers there. Wow. And uh, of course, I didn't get that because I can get it here. I wanted something that I could only get there. But when I saw that they were including that, I was like, okay, this is a real craft beer bar <laughs> because they have some prairie. Nice. Uh, on the, on this pilsner, uh, there, it's hopped with New Zealand wakatu Ooh. hops, which is a descendant of the Hallerto hop, which is more of a traditional German pilsner hop. Mm-hmm. So that's why it has these more more uh, citrusy aroma to it and uh, a little more kick. And it's also made uh, part uh, part of the grain bill is a healthy portion of malted white wheat. Oh, mm. look at that! <laughs> Continuing the that. adjunct theme. Yeah. So it's a real special beer. I was like, why Why do you need five collaborators on a beer? Well, there you go. It takes effort. Well, since we've moved over to beer and we've been talking about things you can do with beer, I know that Cider Girl, while maybe not a beer drinker herself, actually does cool things with beer. You want to fill us in on, on your oh, adventures yeah. in, in beer stuff? Sure. Yeah. So I have been, for those of you who don't know, my, my refrigerator is quite filled with beer. I wonder why. <laughs> and sometimes one needs to like put some lettuce in there or something, you know? Oh, sure. Yeah. That makes sense. So early on in the, uh, the great lockdown, I said, well, what can we, what can we make? You know, we don't, we don't can't go to the grocery store so much. And I got some flour. I got beer. Oh, what can we do? And it occurred to me that there's beer bread. So one of the first uh, COVID recipes I made in my uh, my own oven was beer bread, and that has become a real staple in our house. And it is so it's one of the easiest recipes for people who are shy bakers and haven't done a lot of baking. Uh, beer bread is super easy, requires little to no effort, and in about an hour you have a lovely loaf of bread. Mm-hmm. And um, you can experiment and use any of the beers that you have in the house. So we've done um, stout breads. We've done IPA breads. We just did uh, Christmas bread. We had one Christmas style beer. The uh, the two Xmas. I had all six packs. So we. uh, So I made uh, the bread with it today and it's and the bread soaks up the various uh, flavors of the different beers. So if you if you do a stout beer, it's a darker color. It has a um, a more chocolatey coffee flavor. If you do the IPA, it it comes off a little. The bread is more yellow, and and you've got a little bitter 
aftertaste to it. It rises a little bit more. It rises oh, differently. Uh, one of the most interesting breads we've made is was actually with uh, a sort of Mexican style uh, beer. And that one was Auger, the, yeah. the lightest and, and like raised the most and uh, almost made like beautiful slices of sandwich bread. Which Mexican lager was that? It was the uh, District 96. Uh, okay. Politica. Oh, yes. The Mexican yes. lager. I mean, it's from upstate New York, but. Yeah, but it was a uh, uh, Mexican style, right? Yeah, well, yeah. Exactly. So basically, like, style, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, that's no more unusual than uh, I'm a gang, which is upstate New York, doing all Belgian stuff. Mm-hmm. So. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So those, um, you know, later I can give the captain the recipe. We can put it up on Instagram. Sure. If anybody's I, uh, interested. I, uh, but it's really easy I've to make. Since I haven't been able to get up to District 96, maybe there are a few others. Because yeah, that's the thing is, like, when I see what what are the stouts you generally use because uh, when you use something that calls for stout? Uh, the ones we've used in the past, we've had one Erebus from uh, uh, Torch and Crown. That was our first okay. one, actually. And we've done the uh, one from Ale Mentry, which was an oatmeal stout. That was pretty nice, okay. too. Uh, I think we haven't really done one with a, like an imperial stout, you know, with all the with all the marshmallow. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if you'd stuff. want it. Like, it's one of those things where the same reason where you don't use really good tequila to make a margarita. Right. We've yeah, sort of I, been using the beers that you know we don't necessarily want to. Have right. You want you want a quality beer, but nothing that like you don't want like an eleven dollar can and right. use it to make bread. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Unless you don't like beer, uh, then go ahead. <laughs> But, then, uh, yeah, if, then why bother if, buying the eleven dollar? If you have an eleven dollar can of beer in the house, drink that beer and yes. bread out of the five or six dollar. Yeah, the... and, we, and I don't think any <laughs> of the beer, the breads, all the breads have been good. I don't think we've, yep. we've made a dud yet. Yeah. And the other thing I made just uh, the for the first time a few weeks ago, uh, beans with beer. Mm-hmm. There's a, a recipe called a charro bean, which is C H A R R O, I believe. Okay. It can be made several different ways, but if you want to make it a vegetarian, um, you instead of putting bacon in, you put beer in. Oh, so the beer builds up the broth in in the beans, and then you have a beautiful, uh, almost like a ranchero flavor, spicy bean uh, to make burritos out of, or you know, put over rice. Uh, and that actually also uses a dark beer. That's very cool. Yeah, both I, really I great a- things to make. I've occasionally used beer when making pancakes, Ooh. but I found generally uh, it's good to use a spring or a summer lager. Or there was a one uh, Founders had a while back. It was called like uh, Solid Gold. Yeah, it was like their like their right. their like version of a Budweiser kind of a thing. It was their lager, uh, and that one was really good in pancakes. I find that a stout or something heavy in pancakes makes them weighs them down too much yeah. okay well obviously if we just talk baking science for a second mm-hmm. beer is infusing the bread and replacing the yeast right uh, all the beer uh, bread recipes you don't use yeast anymore so the beer provides the rise and bubble um that the bread needs rather than putting a whole bunch of yeast in there uh and so the less bubbly the beer is that you put in uh, the less of that rise you're going to give the bread. Uh, that being said, the stout breads we've made have been excellent. Uh, mm. But the pancake, I could see you you miss that sort of light fluffiness. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's why that's why the spring and summer lagers seem to be so so good for that. Though you know what you might want to try as an experiment and get back. Oh, yeah. To, yeah, is get some chocolate chips and get okay. a chocolatey. Uh, stout and make a pancake out of that and see how that goes. Yeah, yeah. I think that would have to be like a half recipe because, well, I, okay. I mean, I'd... Captain, I'll come over and help you. It's <laughs> yeah, you oh, would... sure. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm good with that. I, uh, I, just no, five or just... six chocolate chips, you know, just a handful. I, I, I have, you know, I've, I've definitely put chocolate chips in pancakes before. Uh, I also, at some point, recently realized that, like, you can actually make, like, a to I, I I usually like usually like Bisquick or something like that, and the other things. At some point, I'm going to do the thing from scratch because, uh, you know, I mean, unless the world comes back and I don't have time for such things anymore, but we, it seems to be a while yet now. Uh, but I will, uh, you know, if I'm adding the the Bisquick and the 
and the milk and the eggs, uh, and and I'll throw something else in there. I'll uh, I, I I will often do nuts and berries, uh, and I've occasionally done the chocolate chip thing as well. Uh, well, I guess the, oh, I guess what I was starting to say was if I do like a full two cup recipe, at some point I realize like oh, I can actually save half of this and make the rest tomorrow. Hmm. Because it's when you're making a batch of pancakes for two people, at some point you realize most of this is going to get wasted or just you're going to eat it cold later. Not in this mm. house. Yeah. Well, <laughs> sign a girl at Hop Head Huck can pack back the pancakes. It doesn't matter how many. <laughs> well, if she I, made too I many pancakes, can, I'm like, there, I, I will eat them. <laughs> I, 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 I certainly will can, but, uh, you know, sometimes my companion, less so. Well, they, they freeze well, you know. Or again, you just let me know. I'll be right over (laughs) with breakfast stout, which seems only appropriate in this circumstance. (laughs) Yes, but they they actually, no, they don't really freeze well. Uh, There was a time when I would use leftover pancakes and like uh, spread cream cheese on them and roll them up and eat them like a little uh, sandwich thing there. That was always good. It's been fun here on the Zoom to watch... uh... Beer wondered to every sip he takes from the from the. Are meat. you still working through that uh, spicy mead? It's it's good. Uh, here's the thing: I actually really like it. I know it looks like I'm like okay. suffering or something, but it's really good. It's just it gets right up there in my nose every single sip, and it's it's delightful, but it's unexpected every time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very good. Wow. Well, uh, I was this afternoon. Uh, rediscovered one of my locals i've forgotten that uh you know when bars have been closing it's like uh you know you think you just assume that the bar is closed but i went over to a place called broadway dive today oh yeah i don't know if you guys have been over there uh they have a nice it's a nice bottle shop uh it's it's definitely closer to where you guys live yeah it's like a 10 it's like uh 101 and broadway it's on, on broadway it's a pretty old dive bar and then they got bought uh by the whole dive company. They have four bars up, up on the west side. And right. Uh, I remember one point going there before I was going to go over to your house. Yeah, and it's a cool so I know exactly which one you it's mean. It's a it's a nice little bar and it used to be a lot yeah. divier. <laughs> but since it became more of a craft uh, place and they do crawlers there. Uh, so they have draft beer and uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend if you're on the west side, that's a great spot to find good craft beer. And they had every single evil water in there. It was really interesting. <laughs> Wow. I was like, I guess I've got to deal like with them. 30 varieties of the evil water. I've never seen anything like it. Well, I mean, seltzers are very much on trend at this moment. They sure like, are they all on tap? Or no, are they in cans, just- in cans, yeah. I didn't check the Okay, because right here's – this is this is why at one point early on, and I'm working through this, why I was a little prejudiced against <gasps> the hard seltzers. Please. Uh-huh. Because – I would go to a place that was mostly about beer and it annoyed me that so much real estate was now being taken up. Mm-hmm. That they had less selection in beer because like hard seltzer is a thing. And I thought, Oh, you guys are embracing the trend, whatever. There's no good beers here anymore. But I I'm realizing that hard seltzer is actually becoming more of a legitimate art form. There you go. Also, uh, I feel the same way with cider. I would go looking for cider, and I get less cider now because of the seltzers. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, so we're on the same we're on the same side there. Yes, we uh, are. Well, the white claw I, is the is the demon seltzer that gets uh, gets a lot of uh, ridicule. Um, it's, they uh, probably uh, deservedly so. I'm going to say a right, rightfully so. I, I, <laughs> I had I had my first white claw a, a while back, and it was sort of like a jello shot that should not have happened, <laughs> like a jello shot that was really wrong and also fizzy. I, I, I was no hard pass. That said, it is low cal and it gets you drunk. So if that's your main goal, like blessed be. But I would like a little more with my drunkenness. Thank you. But to me, that's one of the beautiful things about breweries getting in on that bandwagon. They're saying like, okay, you're going to take up all this real estate on the shelves. We're going to occupy some of that real estate. Ourselves, yeah, yeah. And so like every brewery said, fine, you're doing this lame-ass shitty frat boy thing. We're going (laughs) to make a good version of that. I know a frat boy, sorority girl, whatever. I feel like they're like college kids who don't want to have a lot of calories. 
young people. It's all about young people, really. <laughs> the kids, it's all about, the uh, kids today ages. with their seltzers. Their seltzers, these kids today, their their seltzers. Oh, it's, it's, it's fine as long as I get drunk as I want to, as long as there's no calories. These kids. <laughs> these kids today. I tell you. Back in my <laughs> day, seltzer came in a squeeze bottle. You had to go to the local store and you had to get it filled. Right at the counter. And then you bring it home and you shit ch- ch- it into your glass. <laughs> oh, get, 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 get into the glass and you enjoy a nice seltzer. Today, they got the, the fruity seltzers and the kids with the seltzers. So just so you guys didn't know, uh, Hot Pet Hockey <laughs> is 75. Huck, I need you to narrate, need you to narrate my life now, with Because uh, I bought my seltzer in two liter bottles. And it was just there, and usually it's the store uh, brand, the grocery <laughs> store. Brand. But yeah, the squirt bottle thing that you got from on the vaudeville—that's that's where Huck comes from. Well, yeah, I think he place. also bought ice too. He would get from the ice guy. They would yeah, the ice guy would come over to the house. He put the ice in the ice box. <laughs> they called it an ice box. Yeah, right. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Huck actually calls his refrigerator his ice box. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a relic. But, but we love him. The hard seltzers were taking over. That seltzer thing I was just talking about out of the bottle was becoming a trend in Brooklyn specifically. True. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, County of Kings. I don't know where it's at now, that trend, but I, I haven't seen it recently, but that doesn't mean it's not happening in corners. You know, I've been traveling slightly less in, in COVID <laughs> times. Today, the kids, they got the machines. They got them just in the, in the kitchen. <laughs> well, you, well, you got the soda stream situation. That's, but you see, you can't spike the seltzer there. You just have to add vodka. <laughs> Speaking of uh, of traveling, uh, yes, I, I I want to talk a little about our weekend beer because once again my highlight in the weekend beer was seeing one of our fellow beer vendors yesterday. I uh, after after riding eighteen virtual miles on my stationary bike, I rode four real miles to meet the beer wonder at Rockaway Brewing, so I could give him some of our sponsored pours for Aww. the show. Yeah, and and we shared a beer at a respectable distance, How and uh, it was uh, and I, I I dressed I dressed appropriately. I uh, the last time I talked about doing something like this was on the Mother Pucker show, where I talked about how I realized that no matter how warm my torso is, my fingers can still freeze. Mm. So I, <laughs> sure. uh, I I I I put on gloves this time, and I rode a city bike four miles to Rockaway Brewery Brewery, and we. Uh, <laughs> And what did you have, Beer Wonder? You remember? Uh, I had their Jelly Bean IPA, which was uh, not as sweet as I thought it was going to be, but it was a delightful New England style IPA um, with a good amount of spice. I don't remember the specific hop combo, but I enjoyed it. I also enjoyed seeing their cat. Oh, yeah. They have a, they have a wonderful cat. cat there, yes. Mm. It was clearly starved for human attention. So just FYI, Rockaway, you need to pet it more, I guess. Or that or it is the most personable cat you've ever met. Predictably, I got the Rockaway Black Gold because it's so good. But I also walked away with a with a four pack of their uh, brownie Imperial Stout. I uh, if if you look at so uh, here's the thing with social media. I, I never know how many different facets we need to have to it. But I uh, in addition to at the Beer Avengers, I, uh, I I I opened a specific uh, Instagram account for the captain. It's not surprisingly at Captain Porter Brown stout because I, I don't overwhelm you with all our posts on the Beer Avengers. So the, I, I posted a picture of myself with the uh, the Brownies Bite uh, IPA. I think you should yesterday. overwhelm us with your posts. Well, I, I mean, I still tag the Beer Avengers, so hopefully it probably shows up there also. But also, it, we got, we then we went walked over to Fifth Hammer. Oh, nice. Yes, that was exciting. Uh, and I got their uh, – it's just this coconut cream pie imperial stout thing. It's it's so good. So good. I had one of those last night. Uh, I think there's some cinnamon in there too. Wow. All it's right. great. And if our viewers at home don't know, the proximity of those breweries is got to be, what, uh, 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 an eighth of a mile at best? Three Stumbling minutes, distance. Stumbling Three minutes distance. tops, yeah. Yes, I mean there's a whole the 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 LIC crawl can be had very nicely between those two, our friends at Iconic, our friends at Big Alice. Like you can just, I mean, unless we forget Alewife, you know, there's there's so much to just fall through in that that part of town. And speaking of beer near things that we've been talking about for the whole show, uh, Beer Wonder was shocked when I got there, and and I, I didn't want to have a beer. 
because it the 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 chill was starting to get to me and uh in addition to all their beers fifth hammer is doing street side toddies oh like this like what was it like was that pear or something or there was some sort of a pear like cider situation and then they had taconic uh it was so great uh Mm. taconic brand uh i think it was a whiskey it was potent and delicious Yes, I, I hope you were you were able to stay awake through your whole uh, subway ride home. I, I did, <laughs> I did, I, I well barely, but I did. Um, well, my ride home was easier because I had to bike it. It's easier to stay awake on a bike ride. I, uh, but I actually, t- honestly, it was the first time I, I like I said, the first time I'd been out since whenever that was, a month or more ago, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, and I took the scenic route home. Yeah, uh, just basically like right along the water there. Cool day. Not not only do I miss what you just described yeah like meeting and going from place to place and all that i miss having someone make and and give me a drink like right. poured a hot right. toddy for you and gave it to you how luxurious yeah. must have felt yeah. mm. beer wonder can we also talk about the other uh <clears throat> really extraordinary thing that happened to you yesterday uh, yes, we can. I remember what it was. I, no, I, 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 I just think I'm just really <laughs> impressed and and think it's great that you're able to do that. But I didn't. I, I don't know how you. I, I don't know how private you are about that. Yeah, we, no, we can talk about, about it. Let's, I mean, let's talk about that. Yeah. Not, I think I'm not the only one here. Uh, I got my first round of a COVID vaccine yesterday. Woo! That's amazing. Uh, I, I, in, in other parts of my not so secret life, uh, I work with senior populations. And mm. so because I have direct contact with them, I'm considered part of the group that, that, that they're, that they're pushing for on that one. So, uh, so I, at 6 30 PM, I trucked over to my local, uh, New York city hospital, uh, H plus H way to go Gotham health. And I got, uh, my first chunk of the Moderna and I'll be honest, it was it was rough afterwards. I was achy and headachy, and my arm still hurts a little bit. But you know, it it is for me the least indication of the beginning of the end of some of this. Mm-hmm. Getting back to what Cedric was saying about us being able to be in a place and have a beer together, or have someone mix a drink for us. That luxury, that thing that that I think a lot of us miss about bar culture and beer culture. So, on the way, very excited. Cider Girl also had the first round of oh wow, Dana, uh, feeling very extra Italian uh, after that. And, <laughs> uh, my arm hurt for three days, uh, like someone just repeatedly punched me over and over again. Uh, but I feel good now. I'm glad to know there's light at the end of the tunnel because honestly, yeah. I woke up and was like, oh, this is this yeah. isn't. Although I hear that means it's working, right? Like if we have a I, response sure. to it, it means it's working. What's great is that so. is that uh, I live with Cider Girl, so now uh, that was really my only worry was her bringing the thing into the house, so, you know. So now That's it's reasonable, yeah. Now it's now it's basically like I'm immune because I don't leave the house. <laughs> you know, doesn't work that way, but <laughs> well, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 uh, the science is still out. Right. <laughs> Uh, but I will put the pitch in that anyone who's nervous about it, yes, it hurts a little. It seems like we've got consensus that it hurts a little bit, but it's the thing that dying gets us back. Dying hurts more, I think. And, well, actually, dying doesn't hurt at all once yeah. you're dead. But Well, fair. Don't fear the reaper. Well, dying hurts being dead. We can be like they are. Don't know. Come on, baby. Or you could maybe not get there and hurt for a little bit and then not hurt and not die. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, I'm excited to have it. Uh, excited to get the second dra- uh, batch of it. And then two weeks later to feel 95% immune will be a nice feeling. Woo. Yeah. You bet. Yeah, I'm, I, I think I, I, the last time I looked, I, uh, because I'm uh, whatever, because it's it, we're, the age group that, that some of us are in, if you don't fit another, if you don't tick another box, if you are, if you're over 65 in most places, you're good. Some places it's over. Yeah. If you, if you are in a, specific profession yeah but otherwise if you're going if like if you're in your if you if you were born in the late 60s and you don't have another box to tick yeah we'll be getting the vaccine sometime in summer but yeah uh, you know, i'm looking forward to it when that happens i was i also really feel that like i think it's great that joe biden said he wants to give a hundred million uh doses in a hundred days i don't think he's going to be able to do that 
But the fact that he's trying to do that means there will be a lot more in that first hundred days than there probably were in the previous hundred days. Yeah, yeah. It means somebody will be trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just already yes. an improvement. <laughs> Hooray! Yeah. Someone's gonna try. Wow! Ooh, nobody cares! Uh... Yay! Well, I was thinking about you know I don't necessarily. I don't know that if I want to go back and work in a restaurant again, but then if they say restaurant workers uh, are the next, then I'll, I'll say, Oh yeah, I'm back. I'm back working in restaurants. No, no. Okay. I said too much. No. Yes. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You should, yeah. Oh, no, okay. I, it's anonymous. No one knows my real name. It's perfect. No, but I, I mean, if, if there is an opportunity for someone to be able to get the vaccine, it only benefits all of us. Oh, as yeah. a society. I'm going to get it. As it as it only benefits right. everyone. It benefits him less if he actually has to go work in a restaurant. If he can say <laughs> that you might be working in a restaurant, like, like, well, you know, my last job was in a restaurant, so that means I get it, right? Well, well I understand. But it benefits because if you give it to me, then I can go back to work, even if I'm not committing right. to go back. Right. To work. right. And it benefits I, us I, because we might, you know, there might be more beers that come our way or <laughs> you know, opportunity. I, I do still have my job. I still have my bartending job. Okay. Technically, I'm still employed. Yes. Well, as a restaurant, then you are a restaurant worker, which means you should be, you know, qualified. Oh, give me the shot, baby. <laughs> so I, I don't know if I specified. This is uh, I, I I I have a whole like prairie shelf in my beer fridge. Mm -hmm. um, wow. This one is really really sweet. I like it, but okay. it is really really sweet. Um, uh, for anyone who I yeah I think I have. It's funny like prairie. I've gotten them from from uh. All over here, I've got. I feel. I think like I have a a, a, a rum based version of one of their like their their mm. bomb is their main one. Mm. Uh, That's great. Yeah, they call it the bomb, and then they have like Christmas bomb, and they have all the other right. They have all sorts of things styles, on yeah. the on the bomb thing. Uh, and so to 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 sort of round this the evening up with our non beer things, and to celebrate that it's inauguration day. Uh -oh. get, today I went out. And I bought my favorite special occasion scotch. Oh, boy. Ooh. This is the Mulvaney Doublewood. Wow. Uh, 12 oh. years aged in, in, uh, in, a, uh, in, in two different kinds of oak, a whiskey cask and a sherry cask. Woo. So oh, I wish we could all do shots to together. Keep, we don't keep the show going till the end of this one. But I want to pour this and toast it. That's good to the Beer Avengers on hopefully a better four years than the ones we had previous to this. Cheers yeah, for sure. Cheers. On that. Cheers. Of our faces so I can maybe put this as, oh, or yeah, put something in front of your face uh, there, Huck. So yeah, <laughs> actually, I like that one. I, I might do that. Where you, where you one more time. Writing. One more time. <laughs> All right. Sure. There we are. There we go. All right. Well, this, is a, this is a really fun show. Really everyone. good. I, uh, and I never even talked about my roast chicken. Oh well, oh, now we have, next we have time. We have upcoming topics. We should do a, yeah, now I, a good I, job. I made a roast chicken. I'm 52 years old, and I made a, made a roast chicken for the first time ever last week, and it was easy, and it tasted amazing, and and now it's all I want to do. <laughs> that's 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 overstating. No, we could. It, it's like, you, you, but we it, could it's start one a new of those podcast things. about it. I'm not going to start a podcast about roast. Chicken. <laughs> no, but it's one of those things where once you realize how cheap it is and how delicious it is. You, you get it and you think like you'll go into a restaurant and the menu is like, why am I going to pay $22 for roast chicken? I, it will still taste amazing, but like $22. I don't think so. <laughs> well, it's because someone else made it, Glenn. That's uh, it. Well, no, I, no, you're, you're, you're not wrong. You're not you're wrong. Not wrong Sorry, but, but it's like, it's also. She's a little drunk. Sorry. No, oh, we're proud of her though. Hey, girl, you make a, you make a great deal of sense. A little. Well, brighter, sick and brighter girl. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it, no. It's, it, it's, it's, it's. I, what I'm saying is that, like, in a nice restaurant, like, if I'm paying twenty two dollars for an entree, I'm gonna pay something that's like a slightly more. Uh, that I know that on the back end, it, there's a little more there because I know you can make a really amazing roast chicken, roast chicken for like five dollars. There you go. There you go. Well, I want to thank yes, Cider right. Girl for being with us today. <laughs> yes, indeed. And I, you know what else I want to say to Cider Girl? But come back anytime. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely come back anytime. Hey, you know, you you are our first repeat guest. I'm honored. Um 
which uh, make would make you our fourteenth guest, but since you're this one guest second, you can't quite hit the Bilbo Baggins spot. And this is a special show as well because but our next our next unique guest will be our Bilbo Baggins. Oh, mm. oh, because we've had thirteen so far. I I, mm. I I see, I see. I'm more a Pippin. <laughs> she is. She definitely is. Well, that's a, that's a merry thought. Maybe I'm the merry. <laughs> oh, yeah all right so i see huck is clutching his faithfully uke anything else thanks uh, beer wonder uh drink more beer just in general and if you're still listening god bless you god i don't even you. believe in god but i said <laughs> say it anyway because i we're we're uh, if you're listening to the end of this uh we love you just for downloading but we love you even more that you're sticking it out till the oh, bitter end and i can and, hear your uh, ride is here yes my ride is here uh all right huck i i i think that's that's i think we're ready for, yeah play us out well with a beer 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 avengers beer 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 avengers beer 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 avengers beer, 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 beer,